Joining us right now is an entrepreneur in the restaurant industry, Cameron Mitchell, who's the CEO and founder of Cameron Mitchell Restaurants. They operate 37 properties in 14 different states. And uh, Cameron, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Becky. You're in the unfortunate position of having to shut down operations rapidly. I believe on Monday you laid off about 4,000 employees. Explain mm -hmm. what happened and why. Well, it's interesting. Two weeks ago, on March 3rd, I was in Washington, D.C. to meet with my bankers, and I expressed to them what a great start to the year we had. We're up 7 percent, same store sales, record profitability for the first two months of the year. This was March 3rd. Tomorrow, I believe March 19th, uh, we will be completely shut down. Uh, I laid off 4,200 people on Monday. We kept about 300. Some of our Florida restaurants were still open, and we're trying to carry out and so forth. Uh, but we've since closed our Florida restaurants, and by Friday, uh, our total of 4,500 associates, as we call them, will be down to six in the home office. Uh, we have a couple of HR people and a couple of finance people still around, but that, that is it. And so our company has been completely much, eviscerated in the past 17 days. How, how much money were you bringing in, how much revenue on a monthly basis before this? We're a $260 million company with about 4,500 people nationwide. We have restaurants coast to coast in L.A. to New York and, and, and throughout the country. So you have gone to Congress and, and asked for some help. I think the restaurant mm -hmm. industry overall is looking for a bailout of about $455 billion. People look at that mm -hmm. and think that's a huge number. Why don't you explain what it takes, why you are looking for that kind of money, and what it would take to get your operations back up and running? Well, great. I think I have about three points on that. One is the industry itself, as you highlighted in, into the segment here, is, uh, employs 15.6 million people, 10 percent of the U.S. workforce, not to mention probably a double that because of all the ancillary businesses, farmers, grocers, or uh, delivery people, et cetera, that support our industry. Uh, secondly, uh, the charities that our industry supports across the country, which really help the most in need that we can't support going forward. So really, I think it's about 20 percent of the economy in the workforce in the United States that we can get back to work. And a lot of these are primary low-income workers that, uh, that need the money and need to get moving. When we think about uh, the hotel industry uh, and the airline industry, they total up to about $420 billion, and they're very important to our economy, and they need the help. But the restaurant industry is more than double that. And uh, we, I, I think that what the National Restaurant Association asked for Congress uh, in their package is reasonable. You think about it. Now, I'm not a movie operator or a barbershop operator, but those places can close down to shut the lights off and, and literally come up and open the next day. A restaurant cannot do that. Uh, we're a cash business and we, we need the money. We need uh, to onboard uh, for us to onboard 4,500 associates takes a tremendous amount of time to hire them, to hire them back, to get the restaurants clean, to uh, order in all the product uh, that we need, to cook it from scratch, to get ready to retrain our people. Uh, it takes about a month to open a restaurant. It's not as simple as just say, hey, we're going to open on the second, and uh, so everybody come back the first, and, and we'll be ready to open. It takes hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to open a restaurant uh, today from scratch. So that's what we're talking about, and that's kind of the bailout and some of the money that uh, the, the industry needs. Uh, these restaurant operators, without the help of the U.S. government, will not be able to reopen. And, and we want to get our economy started when this all passes. And I think the restaurant industry itself is a major, may, will have a major impact on getting our economy back up and running. We had uh, Senator Marco Rubio on yesterday, and his plan that he's been working on and, and hoping to get some, some traction with is, is that you would get the banks to give loans to restaurants and other small businesses all over the country with the understanding that whatever amount of that loan was actually made, uh, was actually used to keep payroll on, to keep your staff employed, would be eventually forgiven by the government. Would that sort of plan help you? Well, that would help us and would certainly help our employees. There's no doubt about it. And uh, if we can do that, but, you know, uh, that'd be great. But we're, we're really, my, my primary concern, I, I appreciate what the government has done is to help our people. Uh, you know, we've been able to keep health insurance through April for our people. And we, you know, made our payroll uh, th through this close down. But 
Uh, the more, most important thing, and, and I want people to realize, when I'm at home hunkering down with my family and our people are at home, uh, we need to know from the, the federal government that we're going to have an opportunity to reopen. You know, I built this company for in the past 26 years from scratch. I can do it again. Uh, but we need the capital to uh, not only, you know, uh, help us through this time where our restaurants are down, our rents are piling up, our bills are piling up, our debt, you know, and, and with no revenue. And then uh, the capital we need to reinvest, to reopen and get up and running. Uh, we'll survive. We're a group of tough people, restaurateurs out there in this country, and we will survive. But we cannot survive uh, without getting the necessary capital we need to reopen. Hey, Cameron, I uh, wanted just to understand, you know, when we do get on the other side of this, and, and let's all hope mm -hmm. we get there sooner uh, rather than later, it, it's, it, it, it's hard to believe, and if you really look at the Chinese example or really anywhere else, that it's all going to come back at once, which is to say mm -hmm. that even, even when you open the restaurant on day one, uh, you know, in week one, in week two, in week three, in week four, in week five, likely it looks like it's a very slow ramp. So the question is, it's not going to be, I imagine, about rehiring the entire staff on day one, as much as I would like you not know, I'd like those staff ne never need to even be rehired because I'd want them to remain on the payrolls. But how do you think about that process and that progression? And it's a virtuous and vicious cycle as well, because of course, the more people that you can rehire, and the, therefore the more people will hopefully have a paycheck and therefore want to go to other restaurants. Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally agree with you. And, you know, again, in the previous segment, well, whether this is a U or a sharp V or whatever, it is going to take some time. And I've spent really little time on our reopening plan because I've been spending all my time primarily on our closed down plan at this time, at the point in time. But I'm sure we'll have some sort of staggered reopening uh, along the way uh, versus all at once. Uh, but as much as we as a country can kind of say, OK, uh, four weeks from now, everybody, we're going to get started. Let's go. You know, school's back in session, et cetera. You know, so I think uh, as much as we can do as a, as a government and as a, a country to start, uh, that'd be great. But we're, it is going to take a little time to ramp. There's no doubt about that. You know, hey, Cameron, for a restaurant to open up in... at 50 percent. Go ahead. Yeah. Go, go ahead. I was going to say, as a restaurant, you know, uh, prior to the shutdown, we were down 35 percent of sales. So. Uh, it's hard to operate uh, with that kind of uh, hit to your sales volume. So when we open back up, you know, if we open up at 50 percent sales or, you know, 75 percent sales, we're going to have to deal with that. But we'll be more prepared for that this time. Uh, but eventually, you know, I believe in the American economy. I believe in the American people. And we will get back uh, to normal here. But the question, as Mohammed said, we have no idea how long that will take. Your sales were down 35 percent just because people were actually heeding the warnings of staying home and, and, and social distancing before the government effectively shut everything down? Correct. All the, correct. All those issues with getting people to come to work, we were facing all those. And, uh, you know, like I said, now our sales are down 100 percent because we're uh, I put the company to sleep officially. Um, Cameron, just talking about some of the things I've seen here in New York, um, some of the restaurants here, I know the restaurant operators have been negotiating with their um, their landlords to basically say mm -hmm. we shouldn't be paying rent during this time or at least paying greatly uh, reduced rent. Are you getting those kinds of deals, too? Because I just wonder how long you hold on to these locations before that gets yeah. into real trouble, too. Yeah, same thing. Uh, we've reached out to every single one of our landlords. We've received uh, pretty much positive response from all of them. We understand we're not expecting rent payment. We've asked for roughly four months at this point in time. We're thinking three months now, mm -hmm. plus uh, getting reopened. But uh, we only had two of our landlords uh, say, no, uh, this is your problem. This is your issue. And I think there's a number of issues, uh, policies in multiple states and the government to kind of uh, curtail that, and make sure that landlords can't evict uh, tenants along the way for non-payment of rent during this time. So. Uh, and, and deal with that. But we, we, we just can't. You know, when you have no sales, you can't pay rent. That's, that's all there is to it. The landlords who said no, were they big companies that we'd know or are these smaller operations? No. Uh, uh, one was a REIT. You don't have to name uh, names. But yeah, no, one no, was that's a REIT. fine. Uh, one was a okay, REIT, then do REIT and another one was small <laughs> private owners. Uh, two were the other, two were small private owners. Uh, uh, and the one REIT has said, we'll, we'll work with you, but we're not sure what relief we're going to give you. So, uh, it, it, but most most of them all been uh, been great, and this is you know this is America. People need to lean in together mm -hmm. and work through this. And I think our landlords understand that we're not trying to dodge rent. I've never missed a rent payment in my life, you know. 
Uh, I've never missed a loan payment in my life. I've never missed an interest payment in my life. But this is, you know, we don't have contingency plans in place for the absolute unimaginable. And like I said, 17 days ago, I thought our business was in great shape and doing great. And today, uh, it's closed.